So let's solve a few examples of capacitors in AC circuits, right? So these are purely capacitive circuits, right? So they would look something like this. You got an AC source and comes over here and you got a capacitor, right? So this AC source is pushing electrons back and forth, right? And it's charging the capacitor and discharging and then charging the other side and it's just repeating over and over, right? So for capacitors in AC circuits, there's really only two equations. So I have my reactive uh, I'm sorry, my reactance, my capacitive reactance, that's equal to 1 over omega c, where omega, the angular frequency, I can rewrite as 2 pi f, right? So I can plug 2 pi f in here if I don't know omega. And then my other one is like the Ohm's law version of uh, capacitance, right? So I can say the voltage across the capacitor is the current times the capacitive reactance, right? Because this is basically the resistance that that capacitor shows, like that imaginary resistance. Okay, so let's do a few examples. Okay, so here's my first problem. It's asking me, what frequency will an 80 millifarad capacitor have a reactance of 0.250 ohms, right? So it's basically just using this first one, right? I want to know uh, the value of my frequency to give me these uh, this reactance. So, so I can plug in and solve here. I just do some algebra, right? I want to solve for frequency. So that would look like that. So I switched my frequency and my reactance, right, to solve for frequency because I multiply frequency over and then I divide capacitance under, right? And then I just plug in. So my capacitance was 80 times 10 to the minus third, right, because millifarads minus third. And then 0.25 was my reactance, which is like the resistance. And so that gives me 7.96 hertz, right? Pretty straightforward problem. Okay, here's my second problem. This one says I have a 20 hertz, 16 volt source, and that produces a two milliamp current when it's connected to a capacitor. So what's the capacitance of that capacitor, okay? So um, again, I can start with my reactance formula, but in this case, I don't know the capacitance, right? I'm trying to solve that, but I also don't know the reactance, right? So I need a way to figure out the reactance because right now I have two unknowns. Well. Okay, so let's go over to my little Ohm's law version right here, right? So this is V equals I times R, and R is the reactance. So I do know the current, and I do know the voltage, right? So I can solve this for the reactance. So now that I have the reactance, right? I got 8,000 ohms for my reactance. So now I can take this, and I can plug this in here, and I can solve for the capacitance. So that gives me 9.95 times 10 to the minus 7th farads, which would be the same thing, right? If you want to put it in like simpler terms, I guess, 0.995 microfarads because that would move it one decimal over, All right? So in this case, I had to use two steps, right? I had to, I'm still using this formula, but I had to solve for the reactants in another way, right? And then I'd take that and plug it in. Okay, last example. So this one, I want to know what current's going to flow when I have a 60 hertz, 480 volt AC source that's connected to a 0.250 microfarad capacitor. And then it's asking what would the current be if instead of 60 hertz, it was 25 kilohertz, right? So it's basically comparing two situations, see the current, right? Okay, so let's solve for the 60 hertz one first. Okay, so I got my reactance. It's 10.62 kilo ohms, right? So 10,615 ohms. So I plugged in the capacitance and the frequency and I solve for that, right? So now let's take that reactance and come over here and use our Ohm's law version and figure out what the current would be because I know the voltage across the capacitor. So when I do that, I get 0 0.045 amps. So that's uh, 45 milliamps. That's my current in the circuit when the voltage, oh, sorry, the source was 60 hertz, right? So this is 60 hertz, okay. Let's go do this again, but now let's do it for the other one, which was 25 kilohertz. All right, so in this case, right, I got 18.84 amps. So this should make sense if you remember like how capacitors work in AC circuits, right? So at a low frequency, this AC source is pushing those electrons back and forth, but it's not going very fast, right? So it has time to fill up this capacitor and so it slows down the current and it acts kind of like a resistance and then it pushes back the other way and that charge, uh, the capacitance capacitor fills up and then it slows down, right? And then it pushes back the other way and it fills up and slows down, right? 
But if you make the frequency high, so those electrons are sloshing back and forth really fast, then it never has time to fill up and slow down the current, right? So this is going to have a smaller reactance or resistance when it's at a high frequency than at a low frequency, right? So this is why if you use capacitors and AC circuits, you can use them to let high frequencies pass, but stop low frequencies, right? That's the, the whole point of like a high pass filter or something like that. 